All right, so this is gonna be a video on section 9.6, which is gonna be dealing with systems of inequalities. So um, what we're looking at here is, the first thing is linear inequalities in two variables. Um, notice here that we just simply have um, a line equation, only instead of having just an equal sign, now we can have greater than, less than, greater than, equal to, less than, equal to. Um, if you're gonna graph an inequality that has two variables, there's two different methods of doing this. Method number one um, says that if my y is alone, and that's key here, my y needs to be alone here. Um, if my y um, is less than um, my graph, then if I have a less than sign, then this is gonna be, we're gonna shade all the places below the graph. If it's y is greater than, then we'll be shading all of the points above the graph. I mean, I'll show you exactly what I mean by that here in just a moment. Method number two, um, if the inequality does not have y isolated, then what we're going to do is choose a test point. Um, I'll tell you right now, my favorite test point is the point zero, zero. It's not always possible to use that as a test point, but it is my favorite one if I'm able to use it. Um, if the test point satisfies the inequality, then your graph, um, the shaded region, includes all the points that are on the same side of the boundary as the test point. Um, if the test point does not satisfy the inequality, then your shaded region includes all the points on the other side of the boundary. Now, um, if you have um, an equal sign in uh, your inequality, then you're going to be drawing a solid boundary, um, a solid line, or whatever your, your graph happens to be is going to be solid. Um, but if there's no equal to, then you'll be drawing a dashed boundary, a dashed line, or whatever it is that your graph is. All right, so let's look at an example. Um, graphing here um, a linear inequality, notice that we've got, we know it's a line because there's no powers and um, no variables in the denominator or anything like that. So let's just find the x and the y intercepts. That's going to be the easiest thing to do. So if we plug in a 0 for x, we'll get negative 4 for y. If we plug in a 0 for y, we'll get a negative 3 um, for our x value. So um, we can go ahead and draw this. Now, notice that we're going to be drawing a dashed line because our inequality does not have an equal sign in it. So make sure that you um, draw a dashed line here. All right, so that's going to be the first thing is simply draw the graph as you're supposed to. Um, notice that y is not alone. So we're going to use method number two. We're going to use a test point. Um, again, I told you that my favorite test point is zero, zero, and I can only use it when it's on a definite one side of the graph or the other side of the graph. And that's the case here. So we're going to use, we're going to plug zero, zero into our x's and our y's. And when we do that, we'll get um, that 0 is greater than 12. Now, folks, 0 is not greater than 12. So the test point, it told us a lie. Since our test point told us a lie, he's not allowed to go to the shading party. All right, so let me get a good shader here. And um, so the shading party is going to be not on the same side as the test point, but on the other side of the test point. All right, so this is going to be the shaded region. Um, a linear inequality must be in slope-intercept form. Remember that is um, y equals mx plus b. Um, in other words, y needs to be isolated to determine um, whether to shade above or below or the upper or the lower part. So in this particular case, um, notice that my y is alone. So when I'm ready to start shading on this one, I can use um, the concepts of from method number one. All right, so um, let's talk about exactly what that means. Notice that this is something, if you pretend that this is a normal equation, this is something from early on in the semester where um, all we'd need to do is realize it's a quadratic and just come up with a transformed parent graph. So we're going to be moving to the right two and up one. Notice that my symbol doesn't have any equal signs in it, so we're going to make sure that we draw this um, as a dashed figure. 
So notice we moved to the right too. We moved up one. Now, where is my shading going to be? Um, and by the way, all, all, all inequalities are going to have shading. So it's not, is there shading? It's where is the shading? And so um, when I go to look at this, this says that all of my y's are going to be less than. So we're going to go below the graph. Well, in this case, below the graph is everything on the outside of my parabola. Okay, so all of my shaded region then is everything below or on the outside of my parabola. All right, um, systems of inequalities, the solution set is if I have more than one uh, inequality, my solutions are going to be wherever my shaded regions intersect each other. All right, so let's take these one at a time. Um, I did rearrange. Um, I didn't like necessarily how they were written, so um, I took the first guy, which I can see as a parabola, and I rearranged it um, so that my y is less than negative x squared plus 4 to just rearrange the right side. And I can see now that I'm going to reflect over the x-axis and I'm going to move up 4 units. Okay, so um, in doing this then, and notice it's going to be dashed because of the fact that it's just a less than symbol. Um, the other one is y is greater than x plus 1. Um, so you could use y equals mx plus b form here, or you could say, oh, that's just the identity parent moved up 1. And so um, take your identity parent, move it up 1, and this is what it's going to look like. All right, but now I need to talk about shading. So um, I'm going to use two different colors of, of shading on this one. Uh, my first shading will be purple, and this one will go with the, uh, the parabola. Notice that my Y's are less than, so these are going to be below. All right, well, if my Y's are going to be below, that's going to be inside of the parabola, inside of the parabola. Okay, so this is where it's below my parabola. And then notice that for the second part, it is y is greater than or above my line. All right, so I'm going to use um, red shading on this one. And so above my line, it's going to be here. And again, the, um, the intersection of these shaded parts is where my solution lies. So if you wanted to make this a little clearer, um, we would say, all right, here's one piece of my boundary, this parabola piece. And here's a second part of my boundary. Notice that I'm keeping it dashed because um, both of these are dashed. And then my answer is everything inside this shaded region. All right, part B, um, we actually have three different equations here. Um, and so the first equation is going to be y is less than 8. Um, and so I'm going to use my dashed line. And this is just a horizontal line through the y value of 8. Um, and in my brain, I'm going to say, hey, my shading is going to be underneath this, okay? Because it says y is less than. Um, for the second piece, it says that um, x is greater than or equal to 0. Well, that's just going to be right on top of the y-axis, so, uh-oh, and hopefully you see what I did here. Let's see, well, let me, there we go. Um, that should have been solid because it said greater than or equal to. So let me change that. All right, so now we've got our solid line right on the y-axis. And my shading for that guy is greater than, so it's going to be on the right side. All right, so I didn't shade it all the way. I just kind of put a few marks in there to show myself where it was. Now, if I were going to overlap these two shadings, um, for the time being, I'll do uh, highlighting, but I'm going to erase it because it's going to get messy. This would be the right side. And then um, for the underside of, the, um, uh, of that original Y, that's going to be right here. So immediately you can see where my shadings are starting to overlap. 
Um, I told you that was going to get a little messy and you saw a little bit of what I was, I'm going to uncover here in just a moment. Um, so the third equation is an absolute value equation. It's a V graph. And so uh, it says that we're going to do a vertical stretch by two. We're going to shift it up one unit. And so our, uh, our graph is going to look like this and it is dashed. Okay. And because Y is isolated and it says Y is greater than, that means everything inside the V is going to be shaded. Now, when I shade the right side of the Y axis, the underside of that horizontal line and the inside of my V graph, then my shading is going to occur in this triangle right here this is going to be where all of my solutions lie, all right? And so I have um, a boundary on top that is dashed. I have a boundary on the side that's dashed. And then I also have a boundary that's vertical that is solid, 